Music is life, and there's at least one song inside each of us that tells a story. The only question is, are you brave enough to let anybody hear your story? My name is D Phantom, and this, this is my story. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. No, not that part. North Philadelphia. There are a few things I remember very distinctly about living in North Philadelphia at that time. Uh, one is we were poor. Uh, two is even though we were poor, uh, my mother always made sure that we were the cleanest kids on the block. And three is there was always some sort of music playing in my house. Music was a part of my life for as long as I can remember. At an early age, Jack always liked music. He um, always listened to music. He always tried to um, sing and act like a, that he was so much older than, than the baby, that like he was six months old, but he wanted to be so much older. And you, if you would have known him at an early age, you would have said, this kid been here before. I can still see that third floor apartment at 2010 West Ontario where I would lose myself for hours digging through my father's record collection. He had everything from Motown to Mozart. My mother would sing so beautifully around the house and every Sunday we attended Zion Baptist Church where I would later join a youth choir. I took piano and flute lessons and I just knew my future was in the world of music. However. It wasn't until hip-hop came along that I knew exactly what that future would be. Standing in front of the house um, on North 13th Street in, uh, in North Philadelphia, um, this is where I first heard uh, Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight. I fell in love with hip-hop immediately and wrote my first rhyme at the age of eight. A few years later, I would make my first beat by mixing Paul Revere by the Beastie Boys with Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Hip hop hit me like a ton of bricks. I knew it was something I needed to be a part of. I mean, I did everything. I was an MC, a DJ, a B-boy, I did graffiti, I tried to beatbox. Anything I could do to be a part of the culture, I was willing to do. A lot of early hip hop was drum machine based. But by the time I heard it, I was already into classical music and, and things like that. So mixing Paul Revere and Beethoven's Fifth, to me, it just sounded like it fit. It wasn't always sweet music at home. My parents weren't always in perfect harmony and I would use hip hop as an escape from that. My writing became much more intense, hungrier, and I developed a reputation as a fierce battle rapper. Me and Phantom knowing each other for Whatever the numbers, we met in like 1988. I was just so impressed by his, his, his cadence, his, 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 his lyrical ability. Like, he was a beast back in the day. He, shot, he got to the point where he asked me to sick him on me. We really did. We actually used to, yo, man, don't make us go get Jeff. And everybody go, oh, why got me like that? My rhyme style was very aggressive. My home life, coupled with the fact that I didn't really fit in with the rest of my peers gave me an underdog chip on my shoulder. Uh, and I used hip hop as my great equalizer. I could be bigger, badder, stronger, faster than anybody who grabbed the mic behind me. It's really where the idea of Phantom came about. Uh, I was able to put on a mask, so to speak, and express myself through this alternate personality. My greatest memory of hip hop really has nothing to do with a song or a concert that I attended or anything like that. Um, it's really more about the day that hip hop came to the rescue of a good friend of mine named Ronald Bats and myself. This spot right here is the 
place where it almost all went down. If you can imagine, Ron and I standing out here, you know, waiting for the bus at maybe two or three o'clock in the morning, coming from a friend's party. Guy pulls up in a black car down the street and jumps out and Ron and I are sitting there talking, continuing to wait for the bus. And he walks up on us and it looks like he's carrying like an umbrella because it's long black and it has a strap on it. Come to find out it was a pump shotgun. He really thought that we were drug dealers standing out there on the corner uh, at 2 a.m. But Ron and I had nothing more in our pockets than tokens for the bus. So Ron and I are sitting there, you know, scared out of our mind. We're just graduated from high school. We've got our whole lives ahead of us. And this guy comes and puts a shotgun to our head. The only thing going through my mind was that I'm going to die tonight. But I noticed that he kept looking at me like he knew me from someplace. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he starts smiling and laughing. So Ron and I are looking at each other like, what's going on here? And the guy leans into me and says, let me pay my respects. And he gives Ron and I five and he starts walking towards the car. Before he gets in the car, he turns and tells me to keep rapping. And I always took that as an omen. If he hadn't recognized me from rapping at a group of parties I used to do in around the area with my DJ Deuce, I might not be alive sitting there talking to you today. For a lot of kids that weren't as fortunate as Ron and myself, who lost their lives during the 90s in Philadelphia on these streets. So when I say that hip hop saved my life, I mean that literally, hip hop saved my life. Ever since that incident, I felt as though I owed it to hip hop to continue doing what it was that I was doing. I've achieved some small degrees of success. I've uh, performed at the Kimmel Center a few times. I've released my own independent album. I've been on television in the Philadelphia market a few times. Um, but I always feel as though it's just that one opportunity out there that will put me over the top. Uh, my motto is, all I need is four minutes and 30 seconds to show the world what I can do. Uh, the rest will take care of itself. So in closing, I, I hope that you've enjoyed this little behind the scenes look on my album, Making of an Underdog. Um, it will be in stores this fall. Pick it up. And I hope you enjoy what you're hearing. Peace. Life is a journey, and I've been fortunate enough to share my journey with some truly talented people. Phoenix has arrived. Say hello, Phoenix. What's up, peoples? My name is Carlos Santiago. What's up, man? This is Chris Hodel. Monica McIntyre on cello. What's up? This is Brian Buzzmatic Bones. My name is Lauren. I play the flute. Antonio H. Stewart. Tell the world your name. I'm Brandy. I play the bass, and my name is Leon Boykins. My name's Corey Anderson, and I'm a bass baritone. Okay, hi, my name is Yumi, and I play the cello. My name is Carly Visconti, and I'm an alto mezzo-soprano. My name is Shatira Tomkin, and I play the clarinet. My name is Emily Dauber, and I'm a soprano. My name is Jack Drummond, and I play the violin. Oh, that was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> hi, listen, I'm like... <laughs>